Good morning and welcome to Hickory Plains Church of the Nazarene, July 21st, 2024. I'm excited for the week ahead. We are heading to church camp and I love church camp. But I would also like to remind you, if you like our videos, feel free to share them and of course press that like button and that gets that algorithm set. And we appreciate all of those efforts. Well, I'm sitting in my home on a beautiful day while I'm recording this, although it is the same sermon I'll be preaching live to my congregation, but you're going to hear the screen door slamming with my dogs going in and out, my washing machine's running, and the locusts are buzzing, and the birds are moving about. It's just a beautiful day, and I am so pleased to share this moment with you. <clears throat> well, today I'm going to be talking about the friendship that Jesus models and that he desires to share with us, and it is most certainly a model for how we should uh, interact with one another, but it's an awfully high standard. But I've been preaching a series of sermons on the two-word biography Jesus gave of himself, gentle and lowly. In this, I have emphasized the manner in which we should treat one another. It seems in today's secular world, it has become quite fashionable to be rude, self-serving, and oblivious to others' needs and especially perspectives. With the world at our fingertips, it's hard to resist the influence of those who have no investment in the consequences of our behavior. What is in reality quite serious is undermined as funny, humorous, and clever. One of my go-to responses to this is, if you're the only person in the room laughing, then it wasn't funny, it was cruel. A few years ago, I was at an in-service, or teacher school as I tell my students. Attending were educators and administrators from across the central United States. As the presenter presented, phones began to vibrate and soon we realized there had been a TikTok challenge. Go to school on Monday morning and see who could destroy sinks, toilets, towel holders, and soap dispensers. Of course, most importantly, film it and post it. Yes, the law got involved and costly consequences were handed down, but I don't think that there was a school there that was spared that devastation. But on that day, across the World Wide Web, young people were given permission by a literal stranger posting as their comrade, their friend, who would not know them if they met on the street and had no investment in their real life. That person invited those students to be the worst version of themselves they could possibly be before they were stopped. This disruption to the tax-funded school day and the emotional toil on the adults, not to mention the innocent students not participating, was enormous. And the teachers were not doing what they were trained and proficient to do, reading, writing, and arithmetic. But today, <clears throat> I really, really want to highlight Jesus as our friend and elevate and define the wonder of that friendship for our comfort on tough days and also as the model for how we should certainly friend one another. Returning to Matthew chapter 11, right before the scripture I've been preaching from, is the account of Jesus addressing those at fault, that find fault in everything. Excuse me, let me repeat that because I didn't read it right. Returning to Matthew chapter 11, right before the scripture I've been preaching from, is the account of Jesus addressing those that find fault in everything and everyone that won't comply to the strict rules of Jewish law and traditional behavior. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling out to others. We played the pipe for you, and you did not dance, and, we, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. When the crowds called him friend of sinners, it was an indictment. But remember, accusers always point out what is contemptible on the assumption that they are above such things or such people. It is a matter of pride, the complete and total polar opposite of a gentle and humble heart Jesus invites us all to be drawn close to. So what does it mean that Jesus is a friend, our friend? It means Jesus chooses to spend time in our presence where we are and what we are interested in. His countenance toward us is welcoming. In Luke 15, 1, it says that two very, the two very groups that were drawn to Jesus were sinners and tax collectors. 
They couldn't stay away. And in this very small picture is a big aha. Jesus, in all his holiness, did not make them uncomfortable because his loving friendship was like a light to a moth. They simply couldn't stay away because he was pulling them to his heart. We all have interpersonal relationships, and within those there are concentric bands of acquaintances consisting of everyone from those we simply know by name to right in the middle, that very special ride or die that some people are blessed to have a particular connection to. You know, that one person you never get tired of seeing, never run out of things to talk about, and when they arrive, everything is better, and you feel completely safe enough with them to open up about everything. And you know, you can't sit next to them at any event where serious decorum is expected because they are definitely going to make you laugh and giggle uncontrollably. You know that person. But still, there's this. There's those things that are in that I'll take this to my grave part of your heart, that self that remains just with you. But it doesn't really go unknown. Jesus Christ is aware because the creator of every facet of our being knows every facet of our being. And his response to that part of us tells us that we net all we ever need to know. His response to that part of us tells us all we ever need to know. He is the friend that will always delight in you and never refuse your presence. Zephaniah 3.17 says, The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. Zephaniah prophesizes at the very end of the southern kingdom of Judah's lifetime. King Josiah had launched a great reform. However, those who came before him had brought religion and morality to an all-time low. But judgment was not and is not the end of the story for anyone. Don't confuse judgment with death. One is final. The other is a course correction. Zephaniah closes his discourse by reminding the faithful who remain close to God when human pride and self-sufficiency have failed that he is in their midst, protecting and keeping them safe while pouring out his love. Delight and rejoice are two vital attributes of friendship. Realistically, all human friendships have a limit to what they can withstand. The actions of the disciples in Jesus' final hours reveal how fragile our commitments and devotion can be. No one would challenge the affection of James, John, Peter, and Andrew, and the others that they had for Jesus. In the darkness, though, he reminds them that they are his friend rather than a servant because a servant does not know what a friend does. In contrast, he has revealed to them his purpose and his heart. That's in John chapter 15, 15. But when he asked them to pray through the night, their human need for sleep prevailed. When he was arrested, they didn't stand up and say, take me too, or I'm with him. They were frightened and they hid, denying any acquaintance or friendship altogether. There was a human ceiling that could not hold up under the stress and pressure. <clears throat> How heart-wrenching for them and for the man that was unjustly and inhumanely treated. But what did he do on that beautiful resurrection day? Well, he waited at the tomb for them. And then he went to the room where they were hiding and he found them. He didn't go to a new planet and start a new and improved human race. He went and found his friends and he drew them to himself. A synonym of friendship is companion, but this word con connotes or connotates the idea of someone who goes with you on a journey. Those men and women who walked through Jesus' earthly ministry and teachings were suffering from fear and rejection. They realized the world they lived in was no longer a place of security and comfort. And Jesus' reaction to this reality? Well, he came and he restored their strength and fortitude with his presence and evidence that he was going to do what he said he would do. And they did go into all the earth with their messages, fearless and bold. They found comfort among the fellowship of believers. They supported one another in Jesus' name and for his sake and purpose. Where the world was harsh, they took gentleness. Where people treated others with arrogant aloofness, they took his sympathy. And where sin, shame, and evil separated people in the great aloneness, they connected. Because Jesus is our friend in all places and in all circumstances. 
Revelation chapter 3 verse 20 says, Here I am, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person, and they with me. Just before this proclamation, Jesus describes these people as poor, wretched, pitiable, blind, and naked, but followed up with, answer the door, and I will sit down with you, and we will be friends, relishing, relishing in each other's company, basking in the warmth of peace and goodwill. It is cruel to suggest that human friendship is irrelevant in the radiance of Christ's affection, nor can we over-domesticate Jesus. God made us for fellowship, for a union of heart with other people. Even the most introverted of introverts gets lonely. Jesus, is, Jesus promises to be that one never-failing friend, constant in all conditions, to all those who answer that door. Let us pray. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for that knock. Thank you for the provision of that door. Help us to always remember in our very worst of times that you are our friend. And in our very best of times, you are our friend. And we are to model that likeness among those who are friendless and lost and lonely and hopeless. Help us to be the church in this manner. Guide us. Open doors of ministry. Help us to know that you are with us and that you comfort us in all things. Thank you for your power and your sovereignty as our creator and our Lord and Savior. In your son's holy name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. You are so loved.